Hello everyone, it's Merlin here. Now today we'll be doing a review which is a patron request from Alex Horner. If you'd like a similar requested video, check out my Patreon. Every little bit helps. Thank you for your support. The Editor is a Canadian horror comedy starring Paz de la Huerta. It's an homage to giallo films, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is basically a subgenre of horror from Italy. These films were basically thrillers with mystery elements. The movies combined many genres such as slasher flicks, exploitation, and other things. Uh, they tended to blend erotic overtones with heavy horror atmosphere. This film was shot on location at several areas throughout Canada. Now, according to Rotten Tomatoes, which I don't always trust, it seems to have garnered some mixed reviews. I think I know why this film did receive a fairly mixed reception. It's aiming at a very specific audience. Now, if you're familiar with the types of films that this one is referencing, which I'll admit I really was not, you'll certainly appreciate it much more, I think. If you aren't familiar, you might not have any idea what you're watching. That was kind of my initial reaction to the early scenes, and it took a little while for me to really get into it. I also had to do some research, as I admit to not watching many Italian horror films of this style. I quickly got the idea, though. You see, I have an appreciation for campy B-movies and weird, super low-budget flicks, so this was essentially emulating those kind of ideas. The plot follows a film editor named Ray Ciso, who is currently working on cutting the final edit of a new giallo film with the help of a devoted assistant named Bella. Once considered to be at the height of his craft and a legend in the film industry, but being overworked one night, he sliced four of his fingers from his right hand, which resulted in the use of a wooden hand for a replacement. After we're introduced to him, a killer stalks out the lead actor, murdering him and his girlfriend. Another actress named Margaret stumbles upon them, succumbing to this hysterical blindness. Her husband, a detective named Peter, begins investigating. Meanwhile, another actor named Cal plans to take the main spot, though the role is taken by a stand-in. Peter starts to suspect Ray, since the killer's signature seemed to be the slashing of fingers off the right hand of the victims. Seems pretty damning. It also wouldn't be surprising that Ray would have a motive, as everyone seems to be a jerk to him throughout the movie. Seriously, almost every character is dismissive or just downright mean to him. Needless to say, you don't empathize with many of these victims. Even Ray's wife, a depressed former actress, doesn't seem to like him too much. As the film continues, more cast members get killed in glorious, gory fashion. People have sex, and Ray has to figure out how to clear his name while trying to continue re-editing the film to compensate for the continuous murders. <laughs> now those are production problems on set. The Editor is a very interesting movie. It's one of those unique experiences for me where I started it off not really getting the joke and kind of hating it as I was watching it. But by the end, I kind of ended up applauding the whole process. I think the biggest hump to get over was the delivery of the style. The movie is meant to be emulating corny but heavily stylized gore and erotica, and it's supposed to be foreign, so many bad movies that are imported tend to have bad dubs, poor audio issues, and weird script problems. So... The film does this unconvincing dubbing on purpose, which is the most annoying thing to adjust to. I kind of appreciate the charm of bad movies, but films that are intentionally bad are kind of tricky to pull off. You ask yourself, why did they do that if they clearly could have done it better? Typically, a guilty pleasure or a so bad it's good flick tends to be more accidental genius of camp, at least that's how I've looked at it. I think it's hard to intentionally make a bad movie that's still enjoyable. Odd, but kind of true. So, this film was more of an art exercise in emulating a whole genre of campy films. Once I got past that, the film was more enjoyable. It helps that the mystery is actually kind of an intriguing one, with plenty of inside commentary on the filmmaking process itself. You've got some egotistical actors, demanding directors, and hardcore fans. It also helps that the main character is somewhat sympathetic, and you honestly feel bad for him and kind of want to see him get out of this okay. It's very obvious that there was a lot of passion behind the scenes on this project. The lighting is used to create very effective mood. The practical effects are obviously fake, but still enjoyable to watch, as they are still well-made props. Also, the soundtrack is really good. Perhaps the most interesting aspect is how well edited the film truly is, with the pacing and post-production work really helping sell the atmospheric moments. It's almost a love letter to filmmaking in general, and the art of editing specifically an often tedious and overlooked and appreciated part of the process, but still essential to the component of making a good movie. I try to keep these videos spoiler-free in case people do want to watch these movies that I see, and, and I definitely recommend this one. So, I will say, though, 
this movie has kind of not one but two twists. The first reveal is who the killer is, which I didn't really see coming, though I thought it did make sense. However, I didn't think it was fleshed out that well, and it was resolved kind of abruptly. But the second twist kind of fixes how abrupt this seems, but adds an extra layer which could make you see how ingenious or weird, pretentious, and frustrating it is, depending on your point of view. The combination of horror and comedy makes very mixed feelings indeed. I guess the twist could be a cop-out, but it really does make sense. So basically, if you can accept the movie as a parody of a certain type of film, it does fit within those conventions. It really works. If you can't, though, it probably won't do anything for you. Overall, I found it to be an enjoyable and rather smart and well-made movie, it's definitely a fun and worth a rewatch if you really want to look for specific details. If you guys want similar reviews like this one and want to make sure that your requests get in, feel free to be a patron. I really appreciate all the support. And, well, in the meantime, I'll get some other videos out for you guys based on the polls, and we'll continue doing new fun stuff. All right, everyone, stay magical.